What is up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? My name is Jade, and this is the Here Is What We Know podcast, episode 9, or as Apple will call it, episode 10. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm joined today by uh, my good friend and collaborator, Simon Anderson, and also my very good friend and lovely assistant, Hannah. Simon, we'll start with you. How are you going? Good afternoon, Jade. I'm um, very good, thank you. Always good to be here. Uh, it's uh, it's an extra special podcast. It's uh, it's the big three seven for our fella Jade here. Starting off the podcast with the best announcement that this dude's a year older. And uh, um, I don't know if that is the best announcement. <laughs> <laughs> One year wiser. So a happy birthday to the big man. And um, and uh, excited to have a fun podcast. Uh, your birthday present really appreciate it simon and hannah you've been in the thick of things with all the various uh celebrations around my birthday how's your week been oh it's been fabulous um i hope that you've had a good time i think you know i tried to first start off with trying to do a lockdown breakfast by taking you out the best way you could in lockdown um since the area is closed so um and then just having... Do you want to share what we did with the people at home? So what we did is we went up, we got up and we went to watch the sunrise. Nice. Um, Very romantic. <laughs> and we're in a place called Bastion Point. So it's up really high, lovely looking over the sea and seeing the sunrise. And then um, just got some takeaway breakfast and had something to eat so it was nice and because it was a lovely way to start the morning and for me it's it's been a week of trials and tribulations i was um just explaining to simon before we went live this evening uh i've had my first taste of radical leftism and we can get we can get into that uh, a little bit later but simon uh question of the daytime what do you reckon oh i am ready i hope it's the spicy one today i've actually just remembered to fill it in <laughs> <laughs> so so we've got it on the secondary screen now and for the people at home uh feel free to join in um as it says in the title, we will be giving away Twitch subs uh, this evening uh, for people that are participating in the chat and people we just recognise as loyal followers. Um, so I'm just going to throw it up now. What does the team of 5 million mean? Oh. <laughs> what does the team of 5 million mean? Who wants to go first? I'll go first if you guys <laughs> don't mind. Please. Um, the, the team of five million means that um, Jacinda and her team of uh, PR cronies have devised <laughs> the simplest slogan to create the most widespread conformity and, um, and <coughs> allegiance to the government's direction. Uh, so the team of 5 million is therefore trying to tell everybody that you need to behave and follow the program and do what we say or you aren't part of the team. And what happens when you're not part of the team? You get kicked out. Mm. So the team of 5 million, although it may seem uh, pleasant and uh, cheery, uh, all comms has many messages and if you if you understand uh, marketing and programming and, and all of that. All communications have multiple messages depending on the level of the receiver. And uh, the team of five million to me uh, means behave, conform, play your part, and you'll stay on in the good books. Uh, your life will be good. You will be okay and part of the group. You'll be in the in crowd. You'll be in the tribe as long as you play your part. And um, I don't think I'm on the team anymore. I was off the team a long time ago. I don't think I was ever on the team. Uh, no, I, I was. I, I, if I would, if I wanted to say anything that kind of 
I guess, put some weight to what I say. I, at the start of this pandemic, was very firmly planted on the team of five million um, and, and was swayed it round to my more level-headed position, but what well, I was much, very much so a part of the team. But hold on, so what does that mean? You were firmly on the team as an you as were, in, you were pro vaccination like you were no there. no no so like this is before vaccination oh, was okay. ever a thing this is like i'm talking about from the very like, i was following covid from you know when it was just a disease in wuhan like i heard of that and I, as soon as i started hearing reports of the virus in wuhan it was like okay keep an eye on this because it, the world's so connected it's just like the video game um hmm. Uh, Contagion or whatever it is, I can't remember what it's called. I think so. Oh, that's the movie, but it's a video game uh, where you, you know, create a virus um, and watch it spread all over the world. So I was like, mm, virus in China, just keep an eye on it. And so I was like, okay, you know, it spread. Um, people's countries started talking about shutting their borders. It goes to Italy. It kind of does damage in Italy. And I was like, oh man, this is pretty serious. And you know, and a few people were saying, this is all. A um, you know, it's all a plan, or it's um, it's uh, it's um, it's they're not telling us the truth and this kind of stuff. So, I I was like, nah. I mean, this is it's all good. The government have got us. You know, they're not lying to us. They're doing the best they can. But you know, you just watch them mismanage enough, and you read enough sources about um, you know, who's who's really paying the bills of the the organisations making the decisions. Um, and you realize it's not as straightforward as they as they say. So I'm not on the team anymore in that regard. Can I go please? please? Yeah, so please. to let um, any of our viewers know that uh, outside of New Zealand, um, we have roughly about a population of 5 million. So one... Wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're including immigrants, so that was going to be part of my. So, yeah. if you let me continue, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Roughly a population of five million. That is including all immigrants or um, people who don't live in New Zeal Zealand residentially. So that's literally the amount of people. Mm -hmm. But that does not include that number includes children. So it is not about the number of people that can actually get vaccinated. So they have started to, I agree with everything Simon has said, it's a full PR market. And they've started to also add the wording, you know, we want to get the people who are all eligible to get vaccinated all eligible so really highlighting well if you're eligible you need to get vaccinated and just highlighting it and then trying to make it look like that number is then possible yeah i see what henna's saying so they're twisting the five million to mean that's how many people are eligible i do get that i do see how people not in the know could probably twist that so what i was going to say is that um, there's, there's definitely the, the 5 million population that we have now, and, and I don't have a reference, maybe we can find one for after the show, but I would beg to suggest the 5 million people on land includes people that, that are not even permanent residents. They're just, mm. they're just people that are here for whatever reason. So, I don't know, Simon, do you, do you have any information as to that? No, I've got no idea what. I, yeah, I was just yeah. assuming it was roughly to the population. But hand into your comment about children not being able to get vaccinated. It's just a matter of time. Like all over the world, <laughs> and vaccinating like up to the ages of five. You know, like in America and stuff, they they're vaccinating kids at all ages. Like, um, so it's only a matter of time before the science tells us it's safe to use on kids, and and people will be like, yeah, please. Take, take my kid, jab him. Yep. So, if if you're watching this show or you you have the benefit of watching us on uh, video on demand on either YouTube or Odyssey, let us know. 
Um, the, this is predominantly a New Zealand term, something that's been used by our Prime Minister. She, she refers to the team of five million quite often, usually when she needs something. Uh, so, so get in the chat, get in the comments. What do you think the team of five million really means? Because, because I, I feel it's a little bit of a um, bullying and pressurization strategy. I feel it. I feel it's a bit abusive, and it's abusive, and I think it's been over the top, and also the fact that. Um, it's been pushed, and just to follow on what Jade was saying is, Jade was saying is, um, you know, what does the, if you could answer the question, but if you're outside of New Zealand also, um, has there been some interesting PR and marketing strategies to try and promote the vaccine to, to people that you want to share with us also? Oh yeah, what about what about free KFC? And one thing I saw yesterday, like this is hot off the press. Um, one community-based organisation was um, offering laptops for every thousandth person. Didn't you say every hundred? Every hundred, for my apologies, every hundred person got got a laptop, and lo and behold, this is in a lower socio socioeconomic area Simon so the and, lollies have well and truly come out it is a vaccine lottery of the ages I've never seen the public purse open so freely for the most like ridiculous of causes like people are just offering anything they have like uh, uh, just in personal business situations the messaging I've heard in terms of like just give them whatever it takes. Offer them whatever it takes to get them vaccinated. The key thing is to get people vaccinated. Just, just give it all. Like it, it is, it is, so far away from, well, like trusted, robust, and scientific medical discussion about the pros and cons of a specific procedure, and the public health reasons for each side of the argument. Absolutely agree, and um, as I say, the, these streams are interactive, so if you've got a perspective to share around the team of 5 million, or anything uh, to do with topics that come up on the show today, uh, feel free to leave them in the chat, but Simon, oh, sorry. I was just you... going to say, one other thing is, um, you know, I was doing my reading, and I thought I'd check out, you know... Um, how New Zealand is actually communicating to those um, individuals with disabilities and I have to say that very poor job there's actually no information directly on the website about the side effects and about the effectiveness of the, we of the vaccine and what it will do what it is literally just saying is how to get your vaccine. I thought you were going to speak to the orders. Because um, the orders have been a big focus for you um, yep, th no, this that week, was, getting that, your company prepared and yep, things. No, that was something else I was going to say. Um, but, you know, so one thing I saw with the... Because one being a disabled woman, I was thinking, so what is it actually like? And... They're very wishy-washy, and it doesn't actually say about the effects. So you could go somewhere else for the effects. So if you're a disabled person, you'd be like, oh, okay, the Ministry of Health does it. Okay, no, they might be able to support me to have my vaccine. Great. Not good. And then I've been looking at the public health orders um, of New Zealand because they're suggesting to mandate... Um, so you know, there aren't any New Zealand <laughs> disability um, disability and health workers now they're trying to say that there is and we've actually found out that um, there are none there aren't there aren't any but they're literally saying you've got to be vaccinated by the 1st of October 
But through my reading is, you know, any CEO can um, request request and and literally register anyone as um, being an exemption. And um, there are a few other different ways that are pretty simple. And I like to know that I found out last night that there's actually an organisation that started... Um, a group of lawyers that have started actually promoting to support people with exemptions. Voices for Freedom, and we and we started talking about them uh, before the stream. I, I'm not making any promises, but I'm I'm thinking about getting them on, Simon. Mm, that'd uh, be good. Yeah, yeah. I'm but sure, they'd love to to mm. to come on. Thanks, Hannah, for that. And um, obviously, we'll we'll be getting uh. You know, independent legal advice to keep things all yeah. kosher. We're not just doing our own research. Is yes, that, is definitely. Is the <laughs> leftists like to throw up air quotes on that? We will be getting technical legal advice. But I just want to move in uh, before the news and talk about a little experience that I had, if that's okay, Simon? Go into it, yeah, mate. I'm keen to talk about this. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, what, I, what I'd like to share um, today is just an experience that I had. It, w- it was a friend of mine on Facebook, and they had a, they had a public post. But, it, you know, when, when, you, when you're just on Facebook, you're primarily promoting to your friends. And so, so her request was, hey, guys, I'm a little bit um, hesitant about the vaccine. I haven't got it yet. Uh, this woman is, uh, for the sake of it, let's just say middle-aged. Um, she She's kind of in her 60s or something. And um, she hasn't got it. And she was being very genuine. And I, I thought her post was well set out that she didn't want to start a debate. She just wanted to create a space where people could share and, you know, add their views about the vaccine. Um, I noticed that a lot of people were were kind of of the same view like so they were all saying oh we're fully vexed um do it for your whanau do it for your fucker papa um do it so that you won't spread um the the virus to children and i i was i was very very keen to see people dropping links because <laughs> The one, the one thing I want to make sure is not misunderstood by the fair familia or anyone is that I'm happy to be convinced where the information changes. And I'm sure Simon's of the same view. As technology develops, as, as research develops, I'm happy to be convinced. But so nobody uh, provided any links to back up their claim that getting vaccinated means you won't spread it to anybody else. Actually, more of the information shows that while the impacts on yourself are lessened, as long as you don't have adverse effects, and that's a whole nother conversation we could have, while, while the impacts on yourself are lessened, um, you can absolutely uh, transmit this to someone else, including children. Um, so, so I went on there and I said, well, I said a couple of things and I've said these on stream, so these won't be big surprises, but I said, uh, you might be surprised to learn we only have uh, provisional approval here in New Zealand uh, for the vaccine. So so that was point number one. And I, and I did say to follow that up, uh, it was my view that that essentially makes the vaccine um, the largest medical trial unconsented by the way in new zealand's history um i've already said that the second point i made around you're just as likely to transmit it so all the comments that i was saying around do it for children because they unfortunately in air quotes can't can't get the vaccine yet uh, so I said, you, you know, I'm going to need to see some information on that because everything I'm reading says that it will. And the third point I made was just to say I'm not 
interested at all in people advertising um, their vaccination status. So I'm not anti-vax. If people want to get the vaccine, I'm not actually here to debate. You get the vaccine, you do what you do what you want to do for yourself. But I think it's unfair and inaccurate to be ma- to to say things like give away your freedom so I can have mine and go to rhythm and vines. Do, do, do we not see the disconnect? Okay, you want me to shoot myself or something that is actually registering a quite high number of adverse effects right at the moment, so you can go to rhythm and violence, okay. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, and so what came out of that was, look, look, I'm using an hominem sort of descriptions, but these very angry, uh, I, I would call radical leftist uh, people just jumped on my comment. And bear in mind, the, the friend of mine on Facebook said she wanted this to be not a debate. She just wanted to hear people's views and move through them at, at her own pace people jumped on my comment nobody else got jumped on just me and and they said um things like uh the the claims that you're making and the statistics that you're presenting are dangerous and unsafe for the people of Aotearoa okay first of all I uh, help me here Simon because you're the white dude we might might need a hand so I, I don't think I actually presented any statistics. I made a claim <laughs> based on what I read, but I didn't cite anything. No. Ne- neither did they. So so they're saying you But your statistics can kill people, Jade. Not not the yep. vaccine or the virus or anything like that. Yep. Your statistics are dangerous and could murder people. People there are people out there that would want you murdered if your hate speech led to some unvaccinated person dying. Never mind the fact that more people are... Two R's, Jade. Oh, you you can actually see this. I can. Oh, yeah. Of course you can. See, that's why we need a white guy, because he can spell. (laughs) Yeah. It's so funny. I remember... All of the books, like growing up through primary school, were called "You Can Spell," and I used to cheat and just tick them all off. Like, yeah, I can spell all of these, and just tick them off. <laughs> but I could, I just couldn't be bothered doing, you know, like the work. So, <laughs> but the the point of me raising this story is, it wasn't just one person saying I was dangerous. Uh, another person said, "Oh, you can't back up these claims." I I don't make claims that I haven't observed. Exactly. Like, like I, do, I don't just sit in my own room and create beliefs <laughs> about things on my own. That's just a weird thing to assume. And then another person said, um, oh my god, this is about public health. How, how could you how could you say things like this to deter people from the vaccine? Notice, Simon, not once did I suggest people shouldn't take it. Not <laughs> once. I'm very careful about that because, as I said earlier, I'm not really bothered if you do or not. You, you know, you're not me. Where where the rubber where the rubber hits the road is where you're trying to force me uh, to do what I want to do with my body. So so that that that's a point that I think is being lost on people. Mm-hmm. Anyway, there were a couple of other comments that I probably can't mention on Twitch uh, due to community guidelines. Wow. Um, I didn't realize it was this bad. Yeah, so... Uh, oh, I must have missed them then, Jade, because I don't, I'm, I, I, don't have a, I don't think I have my mod status anymore because I can't see any comments on Twitch. 
Or were um, they somewhere else? No, no, no. What I'm saying is I can't mention what happened on Facebook due, oh, to, right. due oh. to community guidelines here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought you meant you've just seen some comments that <laughs> you mention. I was like, oh, my gosh. I missed them. Yeah. So um, the truth of the matter is I did actually end up deleting the, um, the comment that I made because the heat was... Weak. Oh, yep. Yep. <laughs> Oh, I'll take that. I'll take that. No, what? you've got to you've got to pick your battles, and it definitely didn't sound like a, a worthy one. No, no, and and I was just thinking, you know, um, we're we're trying to we're trying to maintain a lot of interests here. You mm. and I both being in in the social services sector, so uh, unfortunately, we need to tread lightly. So, so I picked my battle most certainly. Simon, what are your reflections of? What happened yesterday? Or what you know of it anyway? Yesterday? Yeah, this all happened yesterday. Oh, right. I was in, I was in your DM about it. Mm-mm-mm. Wait, no. What, the, the, the public health order or the, the Facebook? No, the Facebook thing. Oh, I mean, um... <laughs> that, yeah, well... People, people just... Uh, the the whole um like you're dangerous your argument is dangerous and <laughs> and and they equate you stating facts that go against what they believe as you encouraging the alternative to what they think right yeah. like they they they're putting words in your head yeah. and then they're not just putting words in your head they're putting thoughts in your head I've, yeah. one thing i've noticed is that with arguments with people or conversations with people like that, when you give them a point of view that differs from what they accept or believe, they apply their cognitive ability to that thought and try and like apply it using their brain, but they don't think it through like you have. And so when, when you say something, they then assume that you've made all these other thoughts to then get to the statement. That's mm. what this like. So when you say, um, you know, there are a few people who have been getting injured from this vaccine more than we're being told about and they're not getting published in the media. People then go, this person just said the vaccine is dangerous, therefore they think the vaccine is dangerous and they think that, and now they've, they're have they thinking that I'm thinking I'm trying to dissuade everybody from getting it. Like, it's, them. It, it's sick in the head, right? Like it's not just that they're, putting words in your mouth and that they're hearing what you say and then not actually hearing what you say but then they use their brain to think how they would have got to that thought not how you would have yeah and i mean that the upshot of this and and really why i bring it to the show this evening is so so the ultimate outcome of what happened is like that they erased my view from the conversation. That, that like I I relabeled the segment of the show a single narrative because, <laughs> y- you know they they weren't allowing another view. I deleted my comment and that was my choice and I own that. Um, but yeah, that that view's gone and people that are scrolling through her page, mm-hmm. what won't be able to see an alternative view and I think yeah. that, that's a real shame. If I may, right, like that is the whole problem with this with society at the moment. You multiply that exact interaction out over every single community group, every single profession, every single political space, every time somebody finds an opportunity to voice their question of the single narrative, there's that other time that they notice somebody else did the same thing and got ripped to shreds. So people just don't stay quiet, right? Like Jade, you just had your own social proof that you just would rather not risk, so you decided to disengage. <laughs> think about think about think about all the research scientists that get funded by grant institutions that would get you know lose any chance at trying to complete any sort of research. It doesn't even need to be related to COVID, you know what I mean? Like, but politicians, businesses, all of that fear of getting cancelled is so extreme that nobody is even risking sticking a little bit of their neck out there. Yeah, and um, 
I like, I don't want to talk about COVID too much on that. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I know you've got a COVID related story coming up, which is cool. It's all good. Uh, but I don't want to make it about my shit, I suppose. Um, mm. <laughs> y- y- you know, I, I, I've been in positions where there's been lots of discussions about the mandate. And I, I'm not opposed to the vaccine. I'll say it for the 145th time. What I'm opposed to is forcing something that is yet to be proven. And if you look at the teachers union and the the health workers union that are in scope for the current uh, mandate, you you know that these these are these are the people we need the most, right? And if if we start forcing medication on these people, where's the line? You know, I was watching a video last night, you know, with a representative of the teachers union saying, we will agree to regular and if needed daily testing. We will do that. You know, you know, because we're not COVID deniers. I'm not. Simon is not. We're, we've never denied COVID. So the teachers union union is saying, give us the opportunity to test daily. Don't mm-hmm. don't don't make us sick with this thing in our arms. Same same with a few things that I'm hearing around the health workers and and disability sector as well. You know, they're, they're saying give us the opportunity to test. And I was gonna say that would make more sense because the whole thing why they're saying to teachers is so you can perfect. You can protect the Tamariki of New Zealand um, who cannot be vaccinated yet. So doesn't it make sense for them to be um, having daily tests or weekly tests? So um, because you can still get COVID when you've had your vaccine. And then another thing I was going to say too was um, I got a call last night and one comment that I got called got told was hey don't rem- don't believe everything you read on facebook okay think about it and i i think <clears throat> i i then said hey this isn't the time to give you advice it's your day you have a great day but um but i was thinking in my head well it's not advice i'm getting off facebook and actually <laughs> the narrative the the conversation that we're we're all believing is all being deleted and being removed the truth and we're actually looking at facts from MedSafe and what's actually going on so and what's in prior history with me um it's given me even more convincement even it's even convincing me even more to think about this until things are more clear and approved so yeah, just to, just to say, there's been a lot on this week. It, it's been a week of growth. I I feel I feel really fortunate to have the space to do this show and talk about these things. Um, to have friends around me that you, you know don't vilify me for merely asking questions. I I do expect very soon, Simon. We will be cancelled on Twitch. Um, but, uh, but, but, but until that day, we may as well enjoy it. And, and with hey, that, I, sorry. I was going to say, well, I mean, I took a very lovely compliment from one of my friends yesterday, um, because I have always been like, not polite, but trying to be super just casual and gently prod people into questioning what they're being told, into looking into things, into into being able to recognize when things aren't right and things that are supposed to just be random coincidences maybe aren't so random and so i never i never attack somebody for a decision they make or a point of view or information they have i always come at it with people thinking that they've made the best decision for for them at the time with the best information at hand um and so i got this compliment from my friend he's like oh he's he's like "Ah." you're pretty good for an anti-vaxxer bro you're actually making me you're actually making me consider some of your points of view and i don't 
consider myself an anti-vaxxer, but he was no. just saying that as a joke because he knew, he just knows that I'm uh, somebody who doesn't follow along with what everyone else is telling him mm. to do. Um, so he's just joking with me, so I don't really care. It's funny, but it was really nice to know that, like, even just for him to acknowledge that, there's a part of him that is actually beginning to look at the things that I'm showing him and saying, oh, maybe that isn't how things are supposed to be or maybe you know we shouldn't really be having a 24-hour all-day televised vaxathon you know or we shouldn't be mandating that people mm. Uh, mm. get a vaccine if they want to keep their job uh, even though these other uh, possibilities of protecting the public from a, a, vi a virus outbreak that doesn't include mandatory vaccination of your pretty much entire population because make no mistakes if they think they can get away with it, they'll vaccinate everybody. Yeah. Oh, we we are losing your picture, Simon. Has something changed on your end? No, I did not do anything, but I can definitely see it. Uh, 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 I've got nothing that's just during the Wi-Fi. My only thinking is, oh, there it's come back. Uh, Obviously, there. something I said was way too hot. And <laughs> the, CIA, the CIA just had to install a back door. So, hello, now that you're watching and recording everything I say, nice to see you there, Mr. FBI or CIA agent. Um, yeah. Go um, men in black. Yeah, you know, we'll probably wrap on this segment now, but I just want to reiterate to people at home whether you're watching now or later on. Um, you know... I feel for people that are still questioning the vaccine. I accept there are people that are still on the fence. They haven't said yes or no. And, and they're also being vilified. So my my heart goes out to you at this time. While, while, you, while you balance things for yourself. You know, I feel for people that are like, well, if I do get an adverse reaction, who's going to be there for me? I'm not so sure. One thing I do, last thing I'll say and then we'll move on is, one thing I, I will say is, thank you for being on the fence right now. It's much better than a lot of people that I know who have said, oh, well, I didn't want to get vaccine, but I thought I had to, so, and didn't really understand the effects. And, oh, I'm just keen to go rhythm and vine, so yeah, just did it, eh? So. I wanted to be able to travel, I wanted to be able to, oh... And it's just like, well, it's good for those to be on the fence to still actually doing, as long as they're doing the research and doing and making sure that they have the best understanding to then go forward and make the decision. The other thing I've heard is, oh, I'm just really keen to go back to the Gold Coast, eh? So you got the vaccine. Oh, how's that border working for you, mate? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. There's... There's always more of us. You can always say no at any time. You can always stand up for yourself and choose not to go along with it. There's mm -hmm. always a choice. Okay, moving on now, being, being really authentic about this, Simon, <laughs> um, it, it's still a little bit about the vaccine, but d just an interesting video that you wanted to share with everyone. And it's kind of on the loop. Uh, um, the more I watch it, the more my brain melts. Yeah, it's pretty sick. I mean, I don't know how many people who've like seen Black Mirror, but it's it's the um it's, the, <clears throat> it's one of the dogs. That's actually they say that the the um the episode writer based the um the dogs from the episode off of Boston um, Dynamics yep. dog robots. But you know, this thing is knocking on somebody's door, grabbing a needle, and just jamming it straight in their arm. Um, I can, you know, you can just imagine this not just being a viral video on Twitter. Um, it's probably, you know, not that many years away from being a reality. Um, they're gonna, there's, it's, it's, it's a possibility that we can't control this outbreak, even with the current vaccination program. So what do we do? We make everybody stay at home. Oh, we can't get people vaccinated if they all stay at home. So what do we do? Send robotic dog doctors robotic dog does eh? over to people's homes and you stick needles in their arms um, well you did actually um jacinda did actually make a quote and I, i've had it sent to me a few times like this is something she said not not something 
that was cut up or edited, she said, we do want to take the vaccine to people's doorsteps. I'm sure you've seen that clip, Simon. Yeah, well, I mean, um, people people have definitely asked for home visits due to accessibility needs. Um, this... Yeah, this I'm not person. Sure and, that's what she was alluding to, though. No, <laughs> that's definitely not what she was alluding to. It's more for the people that, uh, you know, don't turn up to their GP or don't respond to those text messages inviting them to, Lol. to, <laughs> <laughs> to like, go get vaccinated. So they'll send yeah. the dogs after you. And I wonder how far they run and what sort of battery life they have. So, you imagine if they just start shooting needles. <laughs> So this is not this is not a concept. This is something out of a TV show. Is that what you said? I've got no idea. I can't claim how like um, legit it is. I didn't research the origins. It's just more of just a uh, you see these things on social media, and you know, regardless of how much of a joke they seem to be at the time of you seeing it, somehow it becomes you know just like uh, an accepted part of life. You've got just got to be careful what social trends oh apologies for the video quality I no, guess no. the hot spicy takes <laughs> <laughs> you've just got to be careful what social trends are organic and what social trends are forced to elicit a sort of uh common acceptance of that um of that thing you know when they see it in real life uh you know the the people who have been around for a while call it predictive programming and there's a really cool book called manufactured consent um, if you're looking for some good reading, but yeah, it's all about it's all about providing information to people so that when they are um, when they are faced with an event, they can then use that information that they were provided earlier to help influence their reactions and decisions. Um, Simon, what what was I going to say? So, oh no, I've lost it now. <laughs> Mustn't have been that important. Nah, it must not have been. I, I was gonna, I was gonna say you, you said it's, it's not too far out of the realm of thinking that these robots will be deployed. My concern is, um, and a debate that's been raised with me online is that, you know, when we go through airport security, mm. we we go through the scanner and no one complains. You, you might even take your shoes off and your belt off. No one complains about that. Um, y you know, it's just part of being safe in the air. And, like, I kind of see that statement a little bit disconnected because it's totally different taking your belt and your shoes off to get on a plane versus literally injecting something in your body. Have you had that? Have you had that framing presented to you? No, oh, not at wow. all. Wow, I haven't I'm, heard no, that. No. Yeah, like like we go through scanners. Yeah. Why don't you have the view that there's a violation of your body to be scanned? <laughs> well, I mean, if we want to get into things, you, you know, the um, import security really got ratcheted up a notch after 9-11, and you should really look into... Um, the financial movements of money in American um, in American agencies right before uh, 9 11 happened and and, uh, and the the buildings that were destroyed and the information in those buildings that you know were like financial audits of those uh, government organizations that ha were losing money um, you know so maybe all of those government <laughs> all of that uh, security that was put in place after 9-11 isn't just a great comparison for those people. It's a pretty similar comparison for people like us. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, Simon, I, I said to you offline, you know, you know, I looked at that video and I'm like, that that's a really odd use of spot because I've done a bit of research on spot because I'm not going to lie. That, that there is definitely a spot the dog in my future. I, I see some some really awesome, you, you know, access applications for that dog, but I never imagined whether that's a rendering or someone's actually made, you, you, you know, program the dog to do this for a skit, you know, you know, it's just... 
I never imagined Spot would be used like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, for search and rescue operations, it's into it, it's. I think it's like a rule of life or a rule of nature that you know the same force can be used for good or bad. Depend, you know, it's just dependent on the situation and the viewpoint. So, yeah, all of these things that we say, you know, are are bad. There is potential for good, like these robot dogs, but. It's just the actor involved in, in, um, in deciding how it's used. Mm. I, I do, yeah. I I do see like, you, you know, you could twist this for positive and say, well, you, you know, there there is a bit of a risk in catching anything when you when you journey out to the um, what what is it, what is it? We call it the chemist in New Zealand. So. Having a dog pharmacy. pharmacy. Pharmacy? Yeah. There we go. Two white people helping the dude out. It's all good. Pharmacy. So, so you go there and the dog brings you the medicine. I, I see that as really fair, but like as I say, Simon, the more I watch your video, the more my brain melts. I uh, I think it's less about the dog and more about the way the guy just casually rolls up his sleeve like this, eh? Hey, just leans yeah. into the dog like that. Welcome for your three monthly booster shot. <laughs> oh, don't get me started on boosters, but Simon, any final thoughts on that before we move to our second story of the day? Ah, uh, no, just make sure you could lock your door. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I thought I would, um really change tech uh, for, for the remainder of the stream mm. uh, to talk about something that's not a virus uh, I thought I thought you guys would be really interested uh, to know that Facebook is rebranding um, Mark Zuckerberg has been in the media as of late uh, sending out his plan uh, to ensure that Facebook or whatever the name is in the future is actually a metaverse company. Now, yeah. now a lot of people, oh, here we go. That, let's take that reaction. Let's stay with that, Simon. Uh, have you guys seen, like, what is it called? Ready Player One? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just that phase one. You know what I mean? Like, it is, it is the... It is the next evolution of uh, what do they call it? What was it called? Like not my life or something like that, but I don't second know. Second life. Second life. Yeah. Yep. It's that, but with better server infrastructure and the ability for VR potential eventually, or maybe even from the get go. But it, it's just getting people to get sucked into a digital life, and I'm, I'm betting there'll be some concept of NFTs, and you'll be able to like nft a little home and you'd be able to live your life online and buy yourself upgrades and um it would be just like those movies i can i can see it coming and then we'll end up it'll go from ready player one and then we're going to get all the all the way back to the first matrix movie all right so just just so you know the timeline of history we're at almost at ready player one and then there's going to be the tyrannical overlords of the ai and then we're going to end up being batteries in the matrix movie until the one is born and uh we get <laughs> that, that's what's that, happening <laughs> well that 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 wasn't that wasn't the uh that wasn't the tangent that i thought things would be taken but thank you simon i suppose mm. i suppose yes very very much in line with the movie uh really player one but it's it's not stated in the article but i i did wonder whether facebook was just wanting wanting to be more in the gaming space i mean the article sets out that they get a lot of heat every day uh for the fact that uh facebook while it says it's a platform tends to tends to act as a publisher because it's always uh, deleting posts and cancelling people. Uh, in American law, you're not supposed to be able to do that if you're a platform because they have really, they have mm -hmm. really firm free speech laws. And this, this is not just a symptom uh, for Facebook, but Twitter and other platforms as well. So it's an ongoing debate. But I, I quite like the idea of Facebook 
moving into gaming. I, I'm I'm a bit concerned about a company as big as Facebook being involved in the blockchain space because you alluded to NFTs, but what what is actually what is actually more of a concern for me is Facebook already had a failed attempt at launching a cryptocurrency <laughs> you might you might remember called Libra. So they might be they might be using the metaverse as a backdoor to what is actually their plan to have quite a significant stake in uh, digital currency in the future because the these big guys you know Apple Facebook Google they've been largely left out of that conversation. You, you know I've seen projects in the crypto space that are forming <laughs> partnerships with. IBM, NVIDIA, all sorts of things happening. Really, really innovative stuff. And this is this is not crypto advice by any means, but I, <laughs> I, I'm just noticing what I'm noticing, and it's really cool. Can I just say sure. something to explain you? It, it, I'll elaborate too. For somebody who knew nothing about cryptocurrency, was I had no idea that cryptocurrency actually relay... Um, was related to projects. So is it a way, um, so it's about launching, so is it a way to launch a new project and from that, a cryptocurrency will be born? So the article sets out, Simon, that um, Facebook has employed 10,000 people for, for, a de for a dedicated uh, metaverse team so they are thousand people they are being very intentional about this and throwing mm. all the monies all the monies at it yeah um it'd be, it'd be interesting what what happens in the future but rebrands re like this aren't uncommon and this is mentioned in the article uh google for example um, that they split the company out and the the parent is now alphabet um, Snapchat, commonly known as the app on your phone when you want to send thirsty pics, they're now known as the um, Snap Camera Company. They don't refer to themselves as Snapchat anymore. So, rebrands like these aren't uncommon. I'm I'm gonna watch uh, with intent, but uh, but I'm also gonna be really cautious about being involved in anything uh that facebook is involved in i mm -hmm. I, I, I think people should should be really self-aware that that facebook is not a friend online they, they make money from you not for you so to speak yeah and uh jade if i just may add to the uh the wealth of information that uh, is out there um there was a cia project called project lifelog um that existed uh in the early or late 90s uh, early 2000s and it ended um i can't remember the exact date of when they considered it wrapped up but essentially facebook was founded the next day so um do with that information what you will um and you know just always be wary of when anything in the public culture um, dominates because it might likely have been uh, either originated or corrupted by the CIA uh, for their own purposes. So yeah, look up, you know, DARPA, the origins of the internet and um, Project Lifelog and, um, and, and the date that Facebook was founded. Very interesting coincidence there. I will say that not all metaverse projects are bad. So full disclosure, no. I'm... I'm actually involved in one, so I'm involved in one called uh, Sandbox. I, I'm a very low-level investor. I've got a couple of thousand uh, dollars staked with the project, so no, you know I, I'm excited. I'm excited for Metaverse. Um, you, you know, I'm taking on board everything that Simon says about the warping of society and finding people to these homes i can see parallels with the current pandemic response around the world so 
Simon, you've definitely enlightened me in terms of that. Uh, watch out for all that stuff. Hey, you can still make money off it, though. You know, just if you know it's coming and you can kind of see a vision of what they want to do for most people, if you feel like making money off it, there's plenty of money to be made. Well, I got into Sandbox uh, really early, and I don't want to mm. say too much, but uh, the future looks bright in terms of that project. Um, uh I'm not being paid to say this, but um, <laughs> but Snoop Dogg has just announced a partnership with Sandbox. So you might want to check that out, Simon. Sandbox mm. dot, dot game. Yeah. I I never knew um I never knew Snoop Dogg was up with the play with the latest crypto projects. Mate, he is holding NFTs. Yeah. He is holding some crypto punks, some of the real ones. Mm-hmm. Se- several hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of NFTs. It's crazy to think about. <laughs> like even AI generated NFT projects just blow my mind. You just have some code creates like a random creation of reds and yellow pixels, and, and you just mint it as an NFT. And people who need to launder their money will pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for it. Yeah, I mean, I I am a bit on I am a bit on the fence about these like this new culture of procedurally generated. So, artists are trying to find a way to sell NFTs on mass. Because what you used to find is you get one artist releasing like maybe ten or twenty, and and that would be their base of like the project. Now you've got artists write, writing Python scripts to generate 10,000 NFTs. So they might sell for less, but they, they in effect make more. I, I don't know if that's going to stand up the NFT environment, you, you know, for the long term, but it's interesting I to watch. I see the same thing happening now with NFTs with what happened, like when um, different decentralized... Um, what do they call it? Like different uh, currencies that um, were like built on top of Ethereum. Like you know, like all of these like really um, tiny crypto currencies that were built on top of mm. other ones. Like people were just kind of creating the value out of just being there early, and it was just a race to see who could start the earliest in a different Ponzi scheme, and just it was just one after the other. And I feel like it's the same thing now happening with NFTs. People capturing. Um, the new people into the market and like just mm. trying to exploit the fact that they're early and that they mm. need to get in early to get the, the gains. It's interesting. I've got, a, I've got a family member who's also into crypto and some of the conversations that we have, like he reckons uh, that, that a token that is 1,000, 1,000, of a cent you you know you can't even express that in words but if there's not like six zeros in front of the value number you're late and it's sort of like what what sort of brain mounting logic is that because like there there was a point in time where bitcoin was that nobody touched it and i wouldn't necessarily call you late if you got into bitcoin at ten dollars Mm. you weren't late you actually still won so I don't right, know. can you imagine getting into bitcoin at ten dollars <laughs> um even I'm, ten dollars in at ten dollars back then would be what like a few hundred k yeah and i mean simon it was 2010 and i i heard about the bitcoin project then you might remember my driver Hassan. You, I don't, I don't know if you've met him, but mm. I've definitely spoken about him. You, you know, we remember when it was six cents, and we're like, "Ah, oh, is this Bitcoin thing really gonna fly?" Wor- worst mistake we ever made not not getting involved. Mm. Yep. I just wish. I mean, it's part of the mystique, I guess, but like, I really want to know who's behind Bitcoin. Well, we know okay, who's just, behind it. Y- Yatoshi Yakim- what was Satoshi, it? S- Satoshi, Satoshi Yakimoto. Yakimoto. Nobody knows who that is. <laughs> it's not a real person. Yeah. We need uh, to know. Oh, well, 
well, we've come to the top of the hour, so it might be a good place uh, to wrap. Simon, how about we go to you, uh, first of all, for final thoughts? Yeah, um, I'm just reflecting on the latest. I mean, we did spend a lot of time talking about COVID mm-hmm. at the start of the show, but I just wanted to reflect on some more personal stuff and kind of state this now and, you know, as a moment in time. Sure. But like this, um, the most recent framework that the government released to try and address COVID has, has shooken a few extra people out of the trees loose that I really didn't think would respond to it. And it's gotten me like worried. You know, people that I considered really strong-willed, free thinkers, people who had a very strong drive to do well individually, had, you know, had done really well for themselves, had everything going for them, no signs of being, um, without being, you know, rude or mean to people, like, you know, without being weak-minded, very strong-willed. But, um this latest stuff, it just, it just, it, what it seems like is they've just seen no way out. They've really seen every part of their life close in around them. Um, and they've seen no other way out than the way that the government's presented to them. And it's just really sad. Like I totally can empathize with getting, with doing what they've done. It's sad and I wish they hadn't, but I'm not going to judge them for it. Um, but for people out there who may still be, on the edge um there is always another way of the and the government aren't being truthful with you the goalpost will shift and just as soon as you think we're close to getting out of out of this all and you do your part they're going to ask you to do a little bit more until you have nothing left um so i think we just need to stay strong to our values you know if this if this vaccine isn't right for you then it's not right for you until it is yeah I just wanted to say a couple of things. Um, so obviously when we look on on one of our news websites um, that we have and I actually felt it was so nice to finally actually read something that wasn't just an update about the current COVID um, status updates. So 